Centroids? Are you kidding me? Well, centroids aren't that bad. It's just a lot of bookkeeping. It's like energy analysis or statics analysis. It's, it's a lot of bookkeeping. Um, essentially, what we want to do is take uh, the centroids of smaller components and break this up into something smaller so we could deal with and recognize the centroid of those smaller components. What the hell does that all mean? I don't know. I just like using the word centroid. Um, so let's just jump right in. Uh, one thing that I noticed, at least in figure A, is that it's symmetric across the y-axis, if I were to call this the y-axis. So that means if I draw a line down the middle, perfectly in the middle, the moment or the centroid or the tendency of the center of mass is going to be along that center line, at least in the horizontal direction. And the reason why I, I can tell you that is because we're assuming this is a homogeneous uh, material. Uh, it's equally weighted and it's symmetric. It's going to it's it's axis is going to be going to lie directly through the centroid of the shape. So we know that along this line, the centroid of this shape is going to be somewhere along that line. Redundant, I know. But now we're going to split this up into simpler sections. Uh, we're going to split these up into rectangles. And the reason why I want to split up into rectangles is because I know the centroid of a rectangle. It's right in the middle of a rectangle. You know what I mean? Equally on each side. So... Uh, we're going to define our, well, let's start off really basic. Uh, really, the centroid or the center of gravity of an object is a, basically a weighted average of the components on the inside. So, let's see. Uh, we'll say the centroid in the vertical direction, which is really what we're concerned with, um, since we know the horizontal direction is, is symmetric, meaning it'll land somewhere in the middle of the part or shape. Uh, we know that the only variance is in the y direction in terms of the center of gravity. So going back to what I said earlier, it's basically a weighted average based on the areas of those smaller components um, uh, relative to its position of those centroids. Uh, we'll say something like that over the total sum. So. Let's just let's just jump in because I know I've been talking a little bit too much already. So we're gonna call this rectangle A1. It's gonna be A2 and then A3. So let's do this. Uh, A1 is gonna simply be the area of that bad boy, and we're telling we're told that the unit of uh, the width of these bars are one unit. So it's just one. So we're gonna be it's gonna be eight. A2 is gonna be one times eight. That's eight. Oh wait. A1 is 6, my bad. I counted wrong. Uh, A1 is 6, so it's 1, uh, one uh, times 6, if that makes sense. And then A2 is going to be 8 times 1, which is 8. And then A3 is going to be 1 at times 2, which is 2. Um, and then the total area of the bad boy uh, is going to be 6 plus 8 plus 2, that's 10, that's 16. So the center of mass, at least in the vertical direction, is going to be, hmm, let's see, if I sum these up correctly. Oh, we have to find y1, y2, okay. So we're going to call this y1, y2, y3. And the y is the point of the centroid of that subcomponent or sub-rectangle in this case. So the middle of the rectangle, rectangle is the centroid. So halfway between the height of this is going to be y1. Um, so we'll, we'll define y1 as 3. Now, be careful with this one. The centroid of this rectangle, the middle one, is in be halfway in between the one unit wide of the rectangle, but it's relative to some axis. And we defined, as in the problem, this is our zero point for the y-axis. So it's relative to the zero point. So what we can say is that y2 is going to be 6 plus a half, which is 6.5. And then y3 is the same thing. So we're going to add 6 plus 1, that's 7. 7 plus 1, that is 8. So that's our y th y1, y2, y3. Now we can follow the, uh, the formula. So yc is the sum of all these. So 6, six times 3 plus uh, 8 times 6.5 and then plus 2 times 8. So this is basically going to be the weighted average 
That's basically what you're doing. It's just a weighted average um, over 16. And then you do the mind numbing calculation and it should equal 5, 5.38. So, and then you basically repeat this process again. So I'm gonna go one by one. So figure A has 5.38. You should probably test if you can do this on your own. It's not that difficult. So let's go with A1 again. We're gonna go say A1 is eight times one. That's eight, eight, two. Um, that's gonna be eight times one, which is eight, eight total is going to be 16 and then y1 uh, again we're defining our axes relative to the bottom halfway up is going to be the centroid so that's four and then y2 that's going to be eight plus a half which is 8.5 then we do the weighted average again so uh, eight times four plus eight times 8.5 divided by the total area and that's going to give you 6.25. I really hope I'm doing this correctly. And don't forget, you, after you do all this mindless paperwork, uh, or calculations, I should say, uh, you're going to have to rank these in the order from least to greatest. So don't forget about that. There's, a, there's always an extra step to the problem that you might forget. Um, all right, let's do this one. This one should be cake as the other one. So A1. Um, A1 is going to be 4 times 1. That's 4. A2. Uh, 8 times 1, that is 8. Uh, A3, that is going to be uh, 4 times 1, that's 4. Okay, Y1, that's going to be a half, actually. And then Y2, that's going to be a half plus 4, that's 4.5, of course. Y3, that's going to be 8 plus 1, that's 9 plus another half, 9.5. And then you simply do the weighted average again. Man, oh man, this gets really, really tedious. I wonder why. I, I wonder why can't we just program this and then just do it automatically through a computer program or SolidWorks or something like that. I wonder why we can't just do that. Who in the right mind we're going to do this by hand? Tell me that. Someone in the workforce. Tell me, someone you know in the workforce, if you are in the workforce, who does this by hand? I feel sorry for them because I feel like they're living in the 1920s. And they didn't even have calculators back then. That's crazy talk. Um, a total. I forgot to calculate a total. Look at me. I'm going out. Of, I'm going out of control. That's 16, I believe. So then uh, that should give you five, I believe. Hopefully, hopefully. Am I right? Tell me I'm right. Um, let's do this one. Easy clamp, right? Um, a one. What's a one? Eight times one. Classic. A two. That's eight. Wow. A total. At 16. Really, really no variation in this uh, problem. It's really just mindless calculation. Y2, what is that? 8 plus a half, 8.5. Then we do the, the average sum or the uh, weighted average. I think I'm slowly losing my mind. Uh, these videos are supposed to be quick and to the point, and uh, I'm losing material, as some might say. I'm losing content, some might say. Um, and you might be right. Yeah, I know actually you are very right and that should give you 2.75. Let's do this one last time and then we can rank these in the order of fucking, sorry, sorry for cussing. Uh, we could rank these in, uh, the correct order from least to greatest. So A1 again, uh, five, A2, that's going to be eight, A3, that's going to be three total. Someone tell me the total. Um, that's 10, 11, that's 16. Oh my god, another 16. Can't believe it. Y1, that's a half. Uh, hopefully I'm doing these right. I probably missed, m messed up on one of these because I'm going too fast. So this is 4.5. Y3, that's 9 plus a half, that's 9.5. Weighted average, again, 5 times 0. 0.5 plus 8 times 4.5. This is probably the most review that you're going to get for a specific problem. Like, this is actually a lot. Like, I feel like I, this is ingrained in my memory now. This is like doing homework, you know what I mean? So YC should give you uh, 4.4. And then now, since we got... Assuming that you did all these correctly, hopefully we did, because that was very time-consuming. We could define these in the correct order. So it looks like 2.75 is the least. So that's a D, so it goes D, 
Um, what's the next lowest? 2.75 is the first lowest. The uh, 5, it looks like. No, 4.4. .4. It's actually E. Uh, e, and then I believe it's C, right? Is C, 5, and then A, and then C, B. Yeah, so C, A, B. That's how it should be. A decap is the final answer.